this is static electricity. Uh, we're going to study, you know, what is static electricity? Well, static electricity comes from the word uh, not, from the root not moving. Uh, so when something's static, it is not moving. Uh, so if you saw in the video, the one with the, uh, the, the balloon, I deposited some electrons there. I transferred some electrons from the car onto the balloon. And so the, the, the electrons stay there, okay? Um, now we're gonna study tribal electricity, polarization, charge by induction, charge by conduction, and charge by friction. Um, now, an electric charge, all it is is the, an excess or a lack of electrons. If you have an excess of electrons, that means you have extra electrons, um, then we have a, a positive charge. So, so, oh, th there it is. So a positive charge is, uh, is when you have uh, a lack of electrons. And so then you have a, uh, a positive charge. So let me let me draw something in there um, so we can get an idea. So again, we are talking about uh, con conductors right now, conductors and insulators. So if I have an object here, uh, say I'm just gonna put that balloon. If I deposit electrons, we say that we have an excess of electrons. So we have a negative charge. So negative charge. The symbol we use for charge is uh, lowercase q. Now, a lot of the books use capital Q. Capital Q is for thermal uh, electricity. It's just people have become so relaxed now. They, they don't respect the rules anymore. So we have a negative charge there. Now, if I remove electrons, uh, like from the piece of cloth, let me put the piece of cloth in here. A piece of cloth, we remove some of the electrons. So we put the electrons in here. And so this, the piece of cloth uh, became positively charged. And so again, why? It's because it is missing uh, electrons. Okay? And so if you have a positive and negative, yeah, you have a uh, neutral charge. But when this atom loses its, its electron, then it becomes positively charged. And the one who gains it becomes negatively charged. Um, oh, let, me, let me, oops, sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, I, I did something wrong. Now, Conductors versus insulators. Um, let me let me see. A conductor is a material that allows charges to move freely. Uh, and the most the most common uh, conductor will be a metal, you know, like copper, aluminum, iron. Uh, we also have some liquids, um, and and you know you have salt water, you have lemon in it. Uh, we'll see later on, you can actually build a, we're actually gonna build a, a, a battery so you can see how electricity powers things. Uh, so when these charges are transferred to a conductor, the charges distribute themselves evenly throughout the substance. So, so if you have a conductor, and so say this is a conductor, okay? And you put a negative, let's say you put six negative charge on it yeah, like this. Well, what they will do, the electrons repel each other and they wanna be as far as possible from each other because there is this uh, repulsion force and charges distribute evenly throughout the, uh, the conductor. If you put a, a positive charge, actually remove uh, a negative charge from it, then they distribute evenly also throughout. So this is very important. You need to memorize this because we're gonna need that, yeah? The charges distribute themselves evenly throughout the substance in a conductor. Write it down, put a big mark in there. It's a big thing in physics. An insulator, 
like a balloon, like a PVC pipe, um, any plastic rubber, those are insulators. The, the electrons are super difficult to remove. That's why we gotta use some force of friction. Oh, and so, and when I remove electrons or I deposit electrons uh, into a, a, a substance, they stay there. And that's why we have the name static electricity. You know, the electrons that you place there, they will not move. Uh, now in a conductor, they will move freely and that's why you get this effect where they repel each other. In here, they will not, okay? So again, that's another big thing. In an insulator, like plastics, rubbers, they, they, you know, the electrons do not flow. They stay in the same place. And uh, because this is static electricity, we're gonna study uh, you know, what happens when you don't let those electrons uh, or lack of electrons flow, okay. Most of the students know by the time they're in fifth grade that light charges repel and opposite charges attract. So you have a positive charge and a positive charge, they repel each other, they feel a force of repulsion. You have a negative charge and a negative charge, they repel each other as well. However, if you have a positive charge and a negative charge, so, so a positive and a negative, then they attract each other. There's a force of attraction. Now this is only true in physics, okay? In real life, you don't want somebody different from you. You want somebody as alike as you as possible. We also have the low conservation of charges and uh, same as the conservation of mass, conservation of energy. Electric charges cannot be created nor destroyed. They can be transferred from one location or medium to another. Uh, so you can have a sphere and you can put a charge on it and uh, it, but you're transferring electrons from one to the other. That's all you're doing. Now there are several ways you can charge a uh, an object. You can charge it by induction. Um, before we talk about induction, let me talk about uh, polarization. Um, in polarization, let me put the text in here. Polarization is a separation of charges. So. It is the separation of charges, separation of charges. Uh, under the presence of a charged object. Uh, under the presence of a charged object. That's what polarization is, okay? And uh, you saw the balloon, you saw how it, it, it works. And so uh, what I did in there, uh, let me let me draw this. So this is the wall, yeah. And so this is the wall. And then I put the balloon right here. Yeah. Well, when the balloon came in with a negative charge in here, yeah, what it did, it uh, polarized the wall. So the wall, what it did, it repelled the electrons, yeah. And then uh, he left this side uh, with a positive charge. So it basically, uh, when you have a molecule uh, or, or an atom, you got an electron. What it does, it pushes away the electron to this side. And so, and so you still have your proton with a positive charge here. And so the electron just happens to be on the other side. You can also do this, the same thing with water. Water has a... Uh, has an oxygen and it has two hydrogens, you can polarize a molecule of water and, and kind of move this. Now, if I ground, uh, let's suppose I have a metal, I say, okay, so we have a metal uh, sphere, we're gonna insulate it. So it's metal sphere and uh, we're gonna insulate it. And so if, if I polarize this, so let me show you. Uh, this is called charging by induction. It's really difficult to do. Uh, we're gonna do a lab in this. 
And so say you have a negative charge here, okay? And then, uh, and the, the presence of the negative charge, what this does, this becomes, uh, it repels the electrons and this side becomes uh, an, a negative pole and this becomes a positive pole. And that's, I'm polarized, polarizing it. Now, if I ground it, grounding means you place the object, you can touch it. You touch something that is much larger, like I can touch it with my finger, but this is the symbol we use for ground. So that means ground. When you ground something, either electrons can flow this way or electrons can flow this way. Well, how do you know which way they flow? Well, there are, there are two rules. One of the rules says only the electrons flow. So let me write here uh, the rule, only electrons flow. Why is that? And you need to internalize this. Now I say you need to really understand this. It will save you a lot of grief later on. Uh, the electrons are, are usually, uh, especially in metals, they're kind of loose. So they're easy to flow, they're light. Now the protons are bound to the nucleus. So it is, you need a nuclear force to remove them. Well, we're gonna see an exception later on. And so also the protons are 2000 times heavier uh, than the electrons. So we know that for a fact. So you have to know this rule, only the electrons flow, B, yeah. Uh, you need to remember the law of conservation of charge. Well, it, it, the rule actually in this case says for every electron, so for every electron that is a proton, electron, uh, there is a proton, there is a proton with a positive charge. So we need to balance the charges. So look at this, for every one of these protons, there is an electron over here. And so because these ones are already matched up with this, this one will flow this way. And so these electrons will be gone, not these ones. And so that's how we know which way uh, the electrons flow. If we cut the ground, so, so now we've removed the presence of the polarizing agent. So we ground it, then remove the ground now. So remove ground, that's the next step. And so when you remove the ground, let me take my eraser and then remove the ground or son of a gun. There is no more ground. So the electrons are gone. And so now what happens? Oh, you end up with a sphere. I'm gonna write this, I'm gonna write this sphere right here. Oh, there's a sphere. Okay, there is a sphere. Now the electrons are gone. When I remove the presence of the polarized nation, which is the rod, I end up with the positive charge. And then, and so again, here is the, uh, here is the rules. If you can follow this rule, it will be super easy to understand all of this, okay? Uh, let's do a, a, a different, you know, not analogy, a different example. What happens if, what happens if we put a, uh, a positively charged rod. So say this is positive. So this is plus, 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 plus. And we put it in here. Well, the electrons, only the electrons flow. So the electrons we pull on this side from these uh, protons. So these protons will have, remember this is metal. So this is a metal now. Uh, yeah, it's not, uh, so it's a conductor, not uh, an insulator. So the electrons will flow this way. Now, when I ground it, let's, let's use a different ground. Let's, let's use a blue ground. Well, only the electrons flow. And remember the rule is uh, for every proton that is an electron. So for every proton that's an electron, these this are pair up, okay? Now this one don't have an electron. So 
we have a bunch of electrons in this uh, uh, area. And so lots of electrons. So the electron will flow over here. Oh. And so now each one of these protons will have an electron. Now, so what happens if I cut off the, the ground? So I'm going to eliminate the ground now. And so what do I have? Let's take a look at it. So now I have a rod, uh, not a rod, a sphere with an extra, uh, with extra electrons. What? Yep. So I have an extra electrons. And so when I remove the presence of the polarizing agents, so I remove this, I end up with a negatively charged sphere. Okay. And so just remember the procedure. It's simple, it's easy. Uh, but if you don't follow this to rule, it, it is really difficult to, 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 to know what's going on. Now, if you, brought, if you bring a rod that is uh, now that is uh, uh, negatively charged, and this time you touch, yeah? At first, when you bring it close to it, all the electrons flow to this side. So you end up with a negative uh, side, so a polarized side, you know? You end up with a negative, uh, let me see, a negative side on, and then, or, or pole, and a positive pole. Now, if the rod touches the uh, sphere, the conductor, then what it will do, it will, remember only the electrons flow. You can understand this, it makes it super easier. So these electrons will flow over here because the protons, uh, the positive charges will attract these electrons. So when you remove the rod, let's say you remove the rod, uh, it may have no more electrons. It may be neutral or it might have just a few uh, uh, electrons. So it's still be negatively charged. And this one will have a few of the electrons. Oh. So you now have a negative and a negative, and they, you know, uh, they'll both be negatively charged. This is called charge by conduction. We saw this in uh, thermal energy, you know, thermal energy transfer by conduction. Well, electrons also transfer by conduction, okay? And, so, and that's what we call charge by conduction. So we saw charging by friction, that's when you wrap things, charging by induction, um, you bring something close. Anytime you bring something close that you don't touch, then that is called induction. And then this is conduction. Let's take a look at these examples. I have two conductors, okay? And they're both neutral. They are in contact with each other right here. And so I bring a positively charged rod, and it doesn't matter what charge they are. Well, we have a positive, a positively charged rod, it will attract, it will bring these electrons uh, to this side. Remember the electrons flow freely in a conductor. And so this will no longer be there, yeah? And so what happens? I end up with negative uh, uh, charges on this side. I got electrons and I got positive charges on this side, okay? Now, if I separate the spheres, so I'm gonna separate them. So here is one. So what happens? Well, the negative charges end up over here and then you end up with a positive charge on this side. So if I place a positive charge next to them and then I separate them, I end up with a negatively charged, yeah? So this one has a negative charge and the ends up with a positive charge. And, uh, we can say that we charge this by induction because there was no contact between the charged object and the, uh, the two spheres, okay? Now, what happens now if instead of doing that, yeah, I, I take the rod, let me change colors again. I let me change colors again. Yeah. And so I'm gonna do the same thing, but this time I am going to, they're gonna be, uh, I'm gonna, uh, they're going to come in contact. So the rod is going to touch uh, the spheres. Yeah. And so first, I'm going to polarize them. And when I, when I 
come over here with this. Yeah. Uh, remember, uh, these are polarized. So when I touch it, uh, when it comes in contact, I remove the electrons. Yeah. So I remove the electrons. So this came in contact. And so the electrons flow over here because only the electrons flow. And for every proton, there will be an electron. And so I remove this. So, so what do I have now? Well, I have two spheres with electrons missing. So I end up with uh, the charge being evenly distributed throughout. If I separate them, yeah, what do I end up? I end up with a positive charge and a positive charge uh, sphere. Okay. And so that's the difference when they just become in contact. So this, this one, we polarize it, the first one. The second one, we actually uh, charge it by conduction. And the first one by induction, even though there was no ground. Now let's talk about an electroscope, okay? And so let me type in here, electroscope. Electroscope. And scope means to see, like as a microscope, micro means small, to see small things. A telescope, tele means distance. And then uh, microscope, telescope, what else? Uh, uh, periscope. Periscope means, peri means around as in perimeter. So that's to see uh, the effects of electricity. And so an electroscope consists of a metal sphere. So this is metal. And, uh, and we're going to do a, a, a lab on this. And then what it does, it has two loose leaves in here. Uh, and these are usually made out of aluminum or gold. And so if you, if you put a charge in here, you know, let's put a negatively charged rod. So the negatively charged rod, when it gets close to the uh, electroscope, now remember the electrons repel the electrons. So what it does, it polarizes uh, this, this metal. And so the top becomes positive and then the bottom becomes negative, okay? And so, and what it does, these two repel each other. There is a force of repulsion, and that's how you can detect the presence of a charge. And then as soon as I remove this, uh, then the electrons will flow back up, and this will become neutral, and the little leaves will collapse again because everything is neutral. Uh, there is no repulsion. So. Every proton has an electron. Again, you know, now what happens if I now place a, say a positively charged rod. So, uh, so here's the, I'm gonna put it positive now. Well, it will attract the electrons, yeah? And then this will become positively charged. And so it becomes positively charged, then these leaves will repel each other. So we're going to stop there, and now we're going to give you a super easy assignment.